I will dwell on the moment. I'm honored to be here with Rosa and with my colleague, John Larson. Yes, five members, right, in the House from Connecticut. They thought that was appropriate. Dr. Missouri is an icon in this country in terms of her leadership on women's health. What we just heard was really the dispositive statement on the relationship of academics and the personal impact in people's lives. It's a wonderful guide to us. But as always, while she has taught us for many years, we always learn something new from her. Dr. Missouri, thank you for your important role. And let me connect uh, some things here. Rosa mentioned when we were on the uh, Labor, Health, and Human Services Committee together, Rosa is there still making her, her mark and with her leadership. And it, uh, three of us were there, Rosa DeLauro, Nina Lowy of New York, and then of course the three of us, we were, there weren't any women, and they on the Democratic side, and then, there, then later a woman came from the Republican side, and didn't necessarily show up. <laughs> but in any event, I think it's important for us to put together. Never thought she would be sick. She only bought it in case she broke the leg skateboarding, she told me. And she is now, for the rest of her life, going to be paying off hundreds of thousands of dollars of doctor's bills because she died of cancer. Along the way now, she's cured, or God willing, but she still, she said, I work to pay my credit card bills to pay off my health insurance. Hundreds of thousands of dollars in uh, deductibles that she had. So it, it is, um, um, it's absolutely long overdue for us to do something transformational in this regard. But it is important to know that we have to end discrimination, as our bill does, based on gender, and pre-existing conditions. As I said, women are charged nearly 50% more than men for the same coverage. With reform in place, there will be illegal for insurance companies to have gender ratings. Just to be specific, uh, no one will be denied coverage or charge higher premiums because of a pre-existing condition. And by the way, that is in a Democratic bill, if I just may be allowed partisan moment. It is not in the Republican bill. And that includes having a, a C-section as a pre-existing condition, or being, as I said, a victim of domestic violence. And it shorts coverage, treatment, and care that women need are affordable. And said, fewer than half women of, of women uh, obtain um, health insurance on the job. Nearly half of working women can obtain that on the job. And more than half of women reporting delay in need of care due to high cost uh, compared with 39% of men. Now, we want men to have all this access as well. This is not a zero-sum <laughs> game. We want it accessible universally. American women stand at the center of an effort to end for quality, affordable health care. We have a list of reforms in the insurance industry. I repeat over and over again, no denial of coverage because of a pre-existing condition. There's a cap on what you pay in. There is not a cap on what you pay out, not annual, not lifetime. We have two pages of reforms that go on and on that apply to men and women alike, but um, are very important to women. I talked about younger women, childbearing age, and the rest, whether it's maternity, mammogram, or a lifelong issue, or Medicare and Medicaid. A large percentage of people on Medicaid are women. And so with Medicare, for example, we closed the donut hole, the prescription drug and justice to seniors that was in the uh, prescription drug. We played, closed the donut hole, and with the reductions that we make in Medicare, the cuts that we make in Medicare and waste, fraud, and abuse, we will maintain the solvency of Medicare. Don't let anybody tell you, oh, seniors are, con seniors are concerned. What does this mean, cuts in Medicare? It's not cuts in Medicare benefits or increasing in premiums. It's waste, fraud, and abuse. And unless we do that, we cannot keep Medicare solvent. This is very, very important. But the other side who propose health care reform are trying to use that as a scare tactic. And again, on Medicaid, we um, want to make sure that people who are served in that community are safe, served with quality care. So, it, you know, where we are going to be in a few weeks, and I don't know when, and I don't set any deadlines, and when my members come to their conclusion,
conclusion, we will take our vote. Right, John? Yes. <laughs> John, John instructs us on this every day. But the road to where we are today started here. It started here with Dr. Missouri and her leadership on research, prevention, care, and, and the um, relationship of women to caregiving generally across the board, not just for women, manifested in a public policy way through many people who she has affected, but in our case, particularly Rosa DeLauro, whose imprint, as far as women are concerned, is strongly on this legislation. Now, we'll go to Q&A and take some of your questions on it, but I come here to thank you. Thank you for being a, a, a force for this kind of change for women, for everyone in America, for a healthier country. Now, you haven't heard about some of the things that are in the bill because all the controversy has had center stage. But this, uh, Dr. Missouri, as you know, and because you've been a part of it, is about innovation. It's about thinking in fresh, different ways about how we have health care, a healthier America, not just health care, a healthier America a strong emphasis on prevention and not having to charge for preventive uh, uh, visits to, to encourage them. Prevention, wellness, innovation, and I know Rose is just chomping at the bit to tell you some of the uh, nutritional <laughs> some of the issues that are in there about nutrition. And this is about making America healthy. And it's also in doing it in a way that says to all Americans, Healthcare in our country is a right, not a privilege, and this legislation will ensure that that is the case. So many. As relentless as Rosa is on everything that she is interested in, but she gives priority to women health, women's health issues, and anything that relates to family and children. John Larson so too is, but his relentlessness is uh, on how to get the job done through new technologies and recognition of the public-private role. And he is as much of a pest in certain <laughs> <laughs> for the good, for the better. How many times was it? He stopped the meeting and said, "Once again, I want to tell you about." It how the public is better served if we make all of this available uh, to all Americans. He is a, is a great leader in the Congress, and I want to thank him for his insistence that in the, it, not only in this bill, but leading up to the bill. A year ago, when we passed the American New Investment Recovery Act, John was insistent that we had um, uh, investments in health IT. So important, and they'll talk about it. It's so important, and it's going to save money, improve quality as it uh, expands access. At that same time, in that bill, Rosa was insisting that we had more funding uh, for the health, uh, eight, um, National Institutes of Health. So we have one start on this bill in terms of science and technology from the bill that was passed uh, last year. So when this is passed, that will be built on a foundation. 11 million children with health insurance last year was part of, again, our money start on the health of America. But I just wanted to comment on how, what a great leader John Larson has been in this and so many other subjects as well. Thank you, Madam Speaker. I, you know, you listen to the speaker, you listen to the intensity of, of her whole being, and it's a moral compass that she has with regard to this issue of making it happen and her understanding of how critical it is. So it's full steam ahead, and mm -hmm. no one gets it better than, uh, than Nancy Pelosi. And let me just say, serving with John Larson, we now have become where we look at each other, we just, uh, I can start a sentence, he can end it, he can do the same for me. So what a, uh, what, what a friend, and in an institution, and the speaker can attest to that, where you make few friends, a lot of acquaintances, um, John Larson is a great friend. He's a great friend to all of you and to this state. He did that, as I said, in the State House, and he's taken that leadership uh, 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 to, uh, uh, to the Congress, and he is an outstanding chair of our Democratic Caucus. John? I get the sense, I have a feel. Uh, do you remember uh, George Goebel? Yeah. <laughs> you, you know, he had a famous saying. 
after listening to Rosa with her energy and conviction, and then the incredible uh, speech by Dr. Missouri, and then to follow the Speaker of the House. I feel like a brown pair of shoes at a black tuxedo event. So, uh, but indeed, uh, which is exactly what Goebel said, uh, uh, but indeed, I'm honored to be here with my colleague, uh, Rosa DeLauro, who energy, uh, her capacity uh, to do such extraordinary work on behalf of people uh, stems, as they say, the apple never falls far from the tree from her mother. And her tremendous devotion to everyday people, but specifically uh, to the cause of women. And uh, her energy, uh, she is the dean of our delegation uh, from Connecticut and uh, our leader uh, as well. Dr. Missouri, uh, let me uh, say that I think you said it, as Rosa pointed out, succinctly and uh, clearly. I want to tell you what we're up against, though, and why I think when you leave this room, you'll have um, more than an extraordinary appreciation for the Speaker of the House. We are up against, uh, well, it's, it's great to be a part of history. And as Rosa said, we are going to pass this bill. And the reason that we are going to pass this bill is because of our leadership. That's why we're That's the way we're going to the Speaker of the House. Why so? Because this historic moment, not unlike Roosevelt in Social Security or Johnson in Medicare, the time has come. And we are this close. But this bill has been on life support on more than one occasion by those who would like to defeat this piece of legislation. What have they chosen as a target for this legislation? They vilify the Speaker of the House. The just say no crowd vilifies the Speaker of the House. Because as Frank Luntz pointed out, if we stop health care, we stop Obama. Wouldn't you think that in this day and age that we would be thinking about doing what's best for the American people? And stopping health care stops the progress of the American people. And certainly, what you've heard today and what you'll come away with, what a setback it would be for women all across this country. These are great leaders. And more often than not, in our own country, you don't recognize it. Almost a year ago, today, actually it was February 21st, I was in Afghanistan with Rosa, with the NASU, the sixth member of our delegation, and the Speaker of the House. She's from New Britain, Connecticut, though she's in the adjoining district in California to the Speaker. And we had a meeting that was set up by a uh, a friend of the speakers, uh, Heidi Hume, um, who is, I believe, heads up an organization called Roots for Peace. And we were meeting with four women from Afghanistan, two in Burkas, two not. One of them, as I recall, uh, uh, Dr. Mazuda. Jalal, she had run for president of Afghanistan in 2004. For whatever the reason, I had gotten to the room, along with other members of the delegation, be before the speaker, and Rosa and Anna. And when they walked into the room to see the look of hope 
and pride on the faces of these women. It was just incredible. And the humility of the speaker and Rosa and Anna when they came in, and it was as though the breath was taken away of these other women to see the third most powerful person in the free world in two chairs. <laughs> two chairs, that is the truth. And two chairs of such important committees on intelligence and appropriations. And the first thing they said to us is thank you so much for passing Lily Ledbetter legislation. <laughs> now remember, we're in Afghanistan, in my own district. I would be grateful if people, in fact, knew how important that moment was. And with their eyes welled up, they greeted the speaker in Rosa. It's about equity. That happened to be pay equity. Dr. Missouri, Rosa, and the speaker have laid out what this is all about. I am surprised, in many respects, that women haven't already taken to the ramparts. And I spoke to, and I speak to insurance companies all the time about this. When you look at the list of pre existing conditions, and as the speaker has already outlined this, rise up. We need your support. We need to push back against the forces that just want to say no. That think that perhaps by putting another band-aid on the problems that this nation faces, well, that will somehow gloss over the extraordinary need that people face. And so we're here today uh, with the speaker, with Rosa. Let me assure you, our caucus, which has accomplished the entire president's agenda, mm -hmm. under the leadership of Nancy Pelosi, male counterparts in the United States Senate would handle the more than 290 bills that we have sitting there, we would be even more pleased. But they are, in fact, up against a group that wants to stop this at all costs. We're here to make sure it happens. And under the leadership of our great speaker, it indeed will. Thank you. Now your question. a handout and which comes from the speaker's office which identifies all the areas that are covered and with that the floor is yours i think there is a uh, uh, i would ask you just to get up and to identify yourself and then go forward uh, pat go ahead i just want to thank you so much Health campaign with through PCSW. 
Long-term care is certainly a woman's issue. You've said that succinctly. Half a million people in Connecticut are over 65, and 60% of those are women. Women provide the care, the informal support you talked about. They do the paid care for minimum wage. They also need the care. My question is, could one of you address how health care reform may impact long-term care issues, for which I'm keen 